Welcome to Mercurial Outboard Motorbike. Um, moving along from extracting the power head from the outboard and uh, deciding what we're going to do with a 90 degree drive for the gearbox, we need a gearbox. Now if you designed a gearbox for a motorbike in 1942, then just kept polishing it for another 50 years, you end up here with a 1995 Harley Davidson gearbox. They say you can't polish a turd, but you can roll it in glitter, and here it is with its lovely chrome cases on it. But um, the upside of using the Harley, Harley unit, it's uh, in spite of um, 50 years of progress elsewhere in the motorbike world, uh, this thing's still separate from the engine. So um, it it'll do the job, nice and strong, five speed. So power, power comes in primary drive via the clutch over here, and two shafts, five speeds, select a mechanism up here. It comes out to this big um, cast iron belt drive pulley out here. We'll get rid of that. Put a nice big sprocket on instead. And the clutch slips over here with the, what would be called a primary drive on another motorbike. Although I suppose it's a secondary drive on mine. And um, <clears throat> that runs in oil. We'll get rid of that ring gear because we don't need it. And that's where we end up reasonably compact, if a little heavy. Um, but what we need to decide is where to put this whole unit in relation to the engine. And to know that, we need to know the height of that relative to the engine. So we need to know the dimensions of the motorbike frame that it's all fitting into. Motorbike frame, hey presto. 1985 Suzuki GSX 1100 FE, rolling chassis from the wreckers. And suits our purposes quite well. Really important thing is that it's pre-88, so it doesn't have the unleaded fuel emissions requirements, which we'd never pass with our two-stroke engine. And a nice, um, nice big hole for the engine gearbox assembly, with a square tube. So when we know where the engine goes in there, we can um, put the gearbox at the right height to get the final drive to uh, make sure the chain misses the swing arm at that pivot. So back to the drawing board. I don't know how well you can see that, if at all, but that's the back face of the engine, bolting flange, uh, inverted. So crankshaft up here. These bolts all live around the back of the engine case. Two exhaust ports, cylinder heads, and there are the spark plugs in the middle. Uh, and the frame you just had a look at, the main bottom rails sit just there, under the spark plug. Couldn't be much worse really. But we can move them out here to just outside the spark plug, which means the engine can sit down a little bit lower, which is good. And plug spanner can go up through here to get the plugs in and out and should work out quite well. And the, if the engine sits there, then the swing arm pivot is up here. And uh, because there's such a big sprocket on the gearbox, it's a fair bit of leeway for where it ends up. Once again, if you can see it, this is looking at the side of the gearbox. So the engine's heading off up there. That's the back plate at the back of the engine. And the plan A was to bring the shaft out and have the bevel gear up here, driving back to the, to the clutch over there. But it sort of gets in the way of the rest of the frame. So I think there's just room to jam it all in on the back of the engine with the, with the bevel gear here and a little secondary drive down to the gearbox. And that puts the... Uh, Final drive sprocket, just about a centimetre below the swing arm. And looks like where it all needs to go. Uh, we'll develop that scheme a bit further and see if we can make it work. And the exhaust will pop out underneath the gearbox and head off to uh, movie town. Now, a nice thing about that scheme of putting the gearbox right on the back of the engine is a real rear cover on the crank case. Um, with an oil seal in it, and that's the crankshaft poking out there. This, um, this bevel gear fits just really nicely over that, and we can use the oil seal that's already in the crankcase as an oil seal for the gearbox. Very compact. Wish me luck. Here we are, back on the drawing board, just to refresh our that's the back of the engine, engine goes that way, 
crankshafts up here. Uh, final drive gearbox clutches there, going back to the back wheels. What I'd really like to do is put that bevel gear right in the back of the engine. It'd be lovely and have the the shaft come out there. But unfortunately, it all crashes into the selector mechanism for the gearbox. It's all that space is taken, which means the gearbox has to come back another hundred mil, which is not desirable. So we're, that's Plan B. Back to Plan A, have the shaft longer and have the bevel gear out here, and uh, have it beyond the gearbox, driving back. And uh, that's how it's going to be. So we'll get on with erasing that, detailing that, and see what sort of casing we need to make. Welcome to Mercurial Outboard Motorbike. That banging sound is my shit steel shed expanding in the sunshine. Uh, but that aside, seeing um, all the bits were sitting around, I thought I'd just drop the shiny turd gearbox into the frame to see how well it fits or otherwise. And I guess not surprisingly, being a motorbike gearbox in a motorbike, it sits in there quite nicely, clutch hanging off the outside. Uh, but now that we've got the, the final drive sprocket, the big final drive sprocket in place, line that up with the swing arm, and that's where it'll sit. So the clutch, clutch doesn't stick out too far at the side relative to the side of the frame of the foot pegs. It also shows that we've got a little bit of clearance here to um, put the angle drive from the gearbox in there without making the bike too long. So I think we've pretty much decided that's how it's going to be. Once again, back to the drawing board. Moving right along, here we have our shiny turd gearbox. Nice and shiny. Um, gearbox gear selection lever, um, final drive sprocket, what do you call that, a secondary drive sprocket, ring gear and clutch, all stacked up together. Um, this cover on a old motorbike would be made of aluminium, on a modern motorbike would be made of magnesium, on a shiny turd it's made of steel, just so you can make it shiny, they just don't care. Um, inside, underneath there, we have the gear selector barrel. Gears down there, little straight cut gears. And this is the selector mechanism which moves the barrel back and forth as you go along. Um, having decided to put the gearbox like this on the back of the engine, um, there's very limited space between the exhaust ports down the bottom here and, uh, and the output shaft from the crank up here. And as it, as it works out with the final drive there, the, the, the input shaft to the little bevel gearbox ends up right there. Thanks very much. Couldn't be less convenient. Um, so I'm going to use a different sprocket here with less offset that moves it just to the side to create a bit more space. And um, the plan is to have a big lump of aluminium here, which replaces the shiny cover um, and bolts to the back of the engine and holds the bevel gear in the back of it. Hacked out, ho ho hogged out of one, one big chunk of aluminium. What you now see before you is the, the, the undimensioned drawing for the, what I've decided to call the bevel gear input shaft housing. Um, as before, that's, that's the front that bolts onto the back of the engine. That's from the side, that's from above, and that's from the back, so that's a view on this end. But it's a pretty confusing thing to look at. It's a fairly confusing thing to draw. So for my own sake, and for the sake of um, discussing it with the machine shop before they wrap into it, I've done a very old-fashioned thing from my high school technical drawing days and done an isometric, isometric projection which shows what it looks like. But that, um, that gets whacked out of a big lump of solid billet of alum aluminium. Um, so you've got three jobs to do, as I say, bolts to the back of the engine here, the bolts down from the top, bolt to the top of the gearbox, and at the back, um, bolts to the bevel gear housing. So this is the transfer case input shaft housing, and there'll be an output shaft housing bolted to the back across there. So off to the machine shop with that lot. <laughs> 